Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Airplane Anatomy, a series where I break down different airplanes from their history to their engineering to how they fly. So today in episode 11, we're going to be talking about the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, a badass bomber that was so well engineered that it's actually the longest serving aircraft in the US military, active even today and still expected to fly for another 30 years. Now, despite the fact that this badass bomber was actually designed in the 50s, it's actually outlasted many of the modern bombers designed today. But it's actually a little known urban legend that this aircraft was designed over the course of just one day in a hotel room in Dayton, Ohio by a team of Boeing engineers. Now, the planes had a pretty turbulent past since then as well. During the Cold War, the B-52 served as carrier aircrafts for atomic bombs that was used as leverage against Soviet nuclear missiles. But in this process, the B-52 actually acted accidentally released 16 atomic bombs over the US and its allies. So there is a lot to unpack here of what happened and what makes the B-52 so long lasting. We're going to unpack all of that in this episode. Stay tuned. It was 1945, just a few years before the start of the Cold War. The US military was looking for a new bomber aircraft with a high payload capacity and also a long range. This was in order to replace their existing fleet of bomber aircrafts, the Covair B-36. Specifically, they wanted an aircraft that was capable of carrying atomic weapons, and Boeing was put up to the task. Throughout development, there was a lot of doubt on whether such a large aircraft with such a long range was even possible, and after Boeing created the initial prototype and demonstrated it, it was very clear that this new bomber was at best a marginal improvement from the B-36, and by the time that it would finish production, it would basically be obsolete. So this concern actually grew until the entire program was cancelled in 1947. Despite this, Boeing actually continued to research on their own and encouraged engineers to explore every avenue. At one point, the B-52 even had a flying wing design, but this was soon abandoned because of the low stability. In 1948, once again, the Boeing team presented a new and improved bomber aircraft to the Air Force, this time with four propeller engines, but this did not meet the mark. The Air Force told them that they needed to redesign the plane, but this time with jet engines. This was met with a lot of doubts since at the time jet engines were completely new to the aviation industry and had never before been used on such a large aircraft. Many people at that time thought that jet engines were too unsafe and unreliable and also consumed too much fuel, but eventually the Boeing engineers got on board. So the Boeing team decided to head back to their hotel in Dayton, Ohio that Thursday afternoon and by Friday night they had come up with a completely new design for a turbojet bomber. They even created a 14 inch scale model using supplies from a hobby shop for their presentation to the Air Force that following Monday. And incredibly this design was approved. So in 1951 the US Air Force officially placed an order for 282 B-52s and the Shroud Fortress was a go. Except they didn't call it that. They called it Buff, the big ugly fat f***er. Nice. Many designs of the B-52 actually took inspiration from the B-47 Stratojet, another Boeing bomber aircraft that was designed around the same time. This included its jet engines and also its swept back wings, but the B-52 had a much larger wing area for additional lift and stability. Initially, structural fatigue was a big concern during testing, and this was actually worsened during flights at lower altitudes. On top of that, the engineers decided to use the wing's internal structure as fuel storage. This was called wet wings, and added an additional 60% more stress to the wings. As a result, this led to a redesign to strengthen the longerons, which are the structural beams that hold up the fuselage, and also a new skin that was more stress resistant. The skin of the B-52 has actually come into a lot of attention lately due to what appears to be wrinkles that people spot on the ground. A lot of people think that this is due to the old age of the plane, but in fact this was actually an intended design as this allows the skin to absorb some of the stresses during pressurization and depressurization. Another interesting point about the B-52 was that since it was intended to be a bomber, its designs weren't really meant for aircraft agility. So its flight control surfaces were so small that they actually limited the aircraft's movement 
movement in all three dimensions, and in later iterations of the aircraft, it actually didn't have any ailerons at all, which are typically very important to actuate the roll movement of the plane. Instead, it had six smaller spoilerons that would actuate tiny little roll movements. Now, I assume this is to prevent the pilot from over maneuvering the plane, which would bring about stresses that the aircraft wasn't designed to handle. The plane was designed, however, to operate in very rough terrain. For example, one of its most unique points is its landing gear, which could actually pivot to rotate 20 degrees on either side and enable it to land during very strong crosswinds and essentially travel down the runway in a straight line even if it was tilted at an angle. The B-52 was also one of the first military jets to use alternative fuel, which consisted of a 50-50 blend of conventional jet fuel and also synthetic fuel. This was in an attempt to reduce the consumption of crude oil. So you might be wondering, what about the B-52 makes it so incredible that the US military has used it for so long? A large part was that its designs were way ahead of its time, for example, the use of jet engines. But also, it was due to its extremely large airframe, which made it easier to retrofit upgrades or even completely new design overhauls for specific internal components. This was both very difficult and also very expensive to perform on smaller aircrafts. So instead of trying to develop new planes to replace the B-52, it was simply cheaper and easier to make variants of the same plane but with internal upgrades. And that's exactly Exactly what Boeing did. So over the next 10 years, eight different variants of the B-52 were developed and produced. And in 1954, the very first B-52 entered service. In service, the B-52s proved to be a huge improvement from their predecessors, the B-36. In fact, with its eight turbojet engines, it actually gave it a combat range of over 8,800 miles, more than double that of the B-36. To just show off a bit, three B-52s actually flew non-stop around the world in 45 hours. Of course, this was with several aerial refuelings. And B-52s turned out to be pivotal for the U.S. as the Cold War intensified during the 60s. So the U.S. started what were called airborne alert programs, during which B-52s armed with atomic bombs were patrolling the borders of Soviet Union at all time. This was due to the fact that the Soviet Union had actually developed ICBMs, or intercontinental ballistic missiles that were capable of reaching the U.S. Meanwhile, the U.S. was still relying on its bomber aircrafts to defend itself. But since ICBMs traveled much faster, and were almost impossible to stop if the Soviet Union decided to target American air bases, by that point it may have been too late for B-52s to even get off the ground. So for this reason, the US wanted to still maintain their leverage by having some armed B-52s in the air at all times that were ready to respond immediately. And at the peak of these programs during Operation Chrome Dome, 12 B-52s were sent to the Soviet Union every single day. And these missions were extremely stressing to both the crew and the aircraft. Often they would span over 24 hours. But this also posed a very serious problem because remember, these B-52s were armed with live atomic bombs and many of them. So what happens when they crash? Well, unfortunately, that's what happened. From 1959 to 1964, there were actually four such accidents where a failure in the B-52 led to nuclear bombs being dropped over the United States. However, thankfully, none of them detonated, people moved on, and the program continued. However, in 1966, a B-52 collided in mid-air with an aerial refueling aircraft over the coast of Spain. In this process, it dropped all four of its atomic bombs. The conventional explosives on two of these bombs actually detonated on impact, but thankfully didn't trigger a nuclear explosion. However, it still did release massive amounts of radioactive plutonium and uranium into the surrounding area that actually remained for decades. And at that time, 14,000 tons of soil that were contaminated actually had to be sent back to the US for processing. And unfortunately, two years later in 1968, the same thing happened in Greenland. These events proved to be very costly for the US, both economically and politically, not to mention how risky and dangerous they were, and this actually brought a lot of international backlash to the B-52 program. So soon after the sixth incident, the US decided to stop their airborne alert program. So thankfully, B-52s never had to intentionally drop any atomic bombs. If you're curious, the only plane to ever drop nuclear bombs, and that was over Japan, was the B-29 Super Fortress, which I did an airplane anatomy episode on, so feel free to go check that out. 
1991, the Soviet Union was dissolved, and 365 B-52s were sent to the junkyard and destroyed, in accordance with the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty that was signed between the new Russian Federation and the US. However, a few dozen B-52s still remained in the US military to serve in following conflicts like the Vietnam War, Korean War, Gulf War, and many more. Another reason for the B-52's longevity was also its flexibility in performing combat missions both at high altitudes and also low altitudes at high speeds, and replacement projects like the XB-70 Valkyrie and the B-58 Hustler proved to be pretty disappointing as well since they weren't that big of an improvement from the flexibility of the B-52. And even today, B-52 still continue to serve with the US military around the world and has no plans of retiring anytime soon. Just in 2010, the US military signed a contract with Boeing for $11.9 billion to renovate and modernize the plane and has plans to operate it until at least 2050. So there you have it, everything you need to know about the B-52 Straddle Fortress. Now, I think this is an aircraft that's often overlooked by a lot of people, including me at the very beginning. But I think now that its story of how it was developed and designed and the impact that it had on world history is really interesting to talk about. So I'm really happy to have shared this episode with you guys today. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for new content. And I'll see you guys next time. B-52s were sent to the junkyard and destroyed in accordance with the in accordance with the strategic arms reduction treaty in accordance with the strategic, strategic, strategic arms, arms reduction, reduction treaty. treaty in accordance with the strategic arms reduction treaty plans to operate it until at least 50-50 50-50